Hello, this is Lolly. Welcome back. Today I want to show you this incredible set of pencils. I received this as a gift from Derwent. I had I was talking to them and mentioned that I had the set of 12 and that I was going to switch to a set of 24 because I felt like I was didn't have enough colors to work with and they graciously sent me this set of 72. If you're not familiar with ink tints, they are ink pencils. So they're watercolor pencils, but they're ink so that when you use them and they dry, they're suppo you're supposed to be able to layer them because that they have, uh, the ink doesn't reactivate. And you'll notice we got all of these and all of those. You can see the colors here. How beautiful is that? I'm going to show it like this because you could see the color range down here. This is a very generous assortment of colors. Now again, I am familiar with ink tents and I've used them and love them. The color is so much more vibrant than you're going to get with your standard colored pencils or watercolor pencils. But I learned something interesting about these. Because they're ink, you can also use them on fabric. So let's play around and see what we can do. I have this fabric that I picked up from a thrift store and I just love it. And I thought I could add some color to this using those pencils and I could make dermal covers. What I did was I took Heat and Bond Ultra Hold. It says for dark fabrics. I had ordered this online and didn't realize it was for dark fabrics. So what that means is that this is dark as opposed to it's usually white. So what's going to happen when I, when I adhere that is that you're going to see that darkness. It's going to tone the white down. It will affect our color a little bit. But I also have some other fabric that I have scraps of at home and we'll play with that as well. So, um, and this is okay with me that this is going to tone down the brightness of this. So I have cut this in nine by six and a half. What you do is press it to the back. You lay it on the back the way you want, and I want it to go this way. And according to the directions, you're gonna turn the steam off on your iron, turn it to a medium heat, and cover every section for like two seconds. It has to cool completely before peeling. But I'm not going to peel it, I'm going to leave it attached because this will add stability and stiffening to the fabric as I am going through and coloring. And in order to make sure that I don't have any edges of the adhesive of the heat and bond sticking to my iron, I'm going to put parchment paper over this as I do my pressing. I have that pressed on here and you can see the, the gray shadow that it creates. Um, but again, I like this look because it tones down the brightness. So let me cut around this. There we go. So what I was thinking, when I saw this writing, I had this thought, I want a really intense red here. What I'm going to do is come underneath these words here and just kind of make a shadow under the letters. And I find I did not sharpen these uh, to a finer point while working with fabric because I think it would be easier to work with fabric without the very sharp point.
right, so we have this, and I want to work with the water. I have a little rag here. I have a couple brushes. Um, a stiffer brush will enable you to work with the fabric a little better. So I'm going to start off with that. And what I want to do is just pull the color under the words. And you notice that I went above um, the area where I actually have the stabilizer here. And that's because when I trim this off, I might have extra fabric left over. So I'm just grabbing it and pulling it downwards. We could also color on the wet. In other words, um, I could take a pencil right now with this being wet and I could intensify the color in areas that I want to by just drawing right over it. I'm just dipping the tip of my brush in that water. It doesn't take much at all. I'm going to let this air dry because of the fact that I have adhesive on the back. I just don't want to test that and see how well that adhesive holds up under another attack of heat. And I want the next heat to go when I'm adhering this to another surface. Now you can see that this is dry. The colors are a little softer, but I love the fall look to it. Absolutely gorgeous. So the next step is to peel this and I am going to iron it onto this other piece of fabric. Now you'll notice the hem here, this used to be one of my husband's old work shirts. And so if you have work shirts that you just, the collars are frayed and the cuffs are frayed and all that, uh, usually the tail of the shirt is still nice and pristine and that's what I'm using here. And I'm going to press this on and I'm going to use my pinky shears and go all the way around right on that seal. There we go. That is so fun. Now, um, I'm going to stitch all the way around the edge with black thread just for a decorative look. Okay, so I printed off dot grid paper, and I think I did three dots per inch instead of the usual two. I want them to be smaller. So I'm going to make pages to fit inside here. Now, if we cut this right down the middle here, we'd have five and a half uh, sections here, and then trim this down to eight inches, it would look like this inside. And so this is what the pages would look like. They would be a little short on the top and bottom. Um, it's the best way to conserve paper and it gives you a little bit of room top and bottom, you know, so it gives you a little bit of room on the top so your paper clips, you know, can still be in there without sticking out as far. The other option would be to cut each sheet down into five and three quarters by eight, and you would not get as many sheets out of this. So I have, I'm going to cut four of these, 
and I'm going to cut them into the five and a half by eight, just by cutting right down the middle and then trimming this at eight. Okay, so here's what I have. And I wanna show you one thing I did. Because of the border all the way around this, in order to make that even, I trimmed a quarter inch off here and a quarter inch off there. And I still have a bit of a border here. And I think I'm going to put that at the bottom. Fold these in half to get my idea of where the center is. Okay, and then I'm going to put that right in there. Now, I'm going to hold on to this. I've got the center, I'm holding on to the bottom, and I'm going to clip that and take it to my sewing machine. And I'm going to stitch right down the center here. You could also do the hand stitch, which is called the pamphlet stitch. And there you have it. So now we have this cute little notebook. You can leave it as is, you can make a closure with Velcro or magnetized even. You could use your fabric scraps here that we've got. That would be really adorable as well. Um, another thing you could do is put a big piece of ribbon right across here before you stitch it. I'm going to go to this muted olive color and it will blend in. Hold that in place and flip it over. And I want to get that right between these lines here. And I'm just going to go ahead and use my Fabri-Tac to secure this. I have some twine that I thought would make a gorgeous tie on this. But the reason I didn't do it is that when this is flat and I'm trying to write in it, I thought that that bumpy twine might make... Um, a difficulty for me as far as a smooth surface to write on and I'm really big into wanting a smooth surface. So um, I also wanted to say that the beauty of ironing this and pressing it onto this other fabric was that it also helped to seal uh, the or make more permanent the ink on the front. And so now we've got this cute little thing here. Oh, how cute. So that was a really a very fast journal, and I just love this on fabric. And I want to give you a hint here. The smoother the fabric, the easier it will be to do this. If you have, because you can also stamp on your fabric, you know, like this. You can use a VersaCraft and then heat set that. And uh, for fabric, paper, wood, and more, you could use a flower stamp or whatever. And then when that is set and you press that to make sure it's not going to bleed, you can use your, your watercolor, your ink tense pencils on it. Would make a beautiful, beautiful design. So, but you want a smoother fabric.